Guys, gaming and tech is an interesting section this week. Uh, we have the Mortal Kombat 1 stress test happened since we last spoke, so we're going to talk about that. Also, the Nintendo Direct happened literally as I was getting ready to upload last week's episode, so we've got a lot to talk about there. We also have some very interesting AI situation with YouTube. We'll get to that in just a minute, but first... Uh, it's like I Welcome, nerds, to the gaming and tech news for the week. This is a clip that has been taken out of the main show, The Week in Nerddom, which goes up on the main channel, youtube.com slash generally nerdy. In gaming and tech, we like to talk about, well, you know, gaming and tech. Trailers, uh, announcements for new tech and games and consoles and everything in between that is gaming and or tech related. So this week in gaming and tech, all of this stuff happened. I said, starting things off in the follow-up, section uh batman arkham trilogy has been announced and this we'll get it we, uh, th we're going to get into detail here before we get into the N nintendo direct stuff because there is a, a, a separate larger conversation involved with this so Batman Arkham Trilogy, there is going to be a physical release for the Switch. You can get a game cartridge for your Nintendo Switch. That has some of the information on there, but you have three games worth of content, so you're not going to be able to get all of the information onto the 32 gig card. It's just not going to happen. So what basically the conclusion is, is you're just going to have to download roughly 70% of the content direct to storage on your Nintendo Switch, uh, which is the, the, the larger conversation here is digital only gaming. Uh, do you really own your game if you can't break it? Uh, that's a, a, this kind of a, a play on, on something that uh, a friend of mine says regularly is, I don't, I don't own it if I can't break it. If I can't snap the CD in half and make it non-existent, then it doesn't exist to me to begin with. Or really, I'm just renting it. So, uh, I, this is this is such an interesting like because so also Starfield has been has made an announcement about this recently. Uh, the collector's edition of Starfield is not going to have a physical disc. The standard edition of Starfield will have a physical disc. If you so desire to get a physical disc, you have to purchase the standard edition. Why? Well, because there are two different versions of the Xbox. Uh, Xbox hardware, the the Series X has a disk drive. The Series S does not. So why do two separate versions of the game uh, when really the, 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 most of the information is going to have to be downloaded anyway? Because judging by the size of Starfield, even on an Xbox with a, an optical drive, there's not... There's not a whole lot of room on an optical drive to have over a thousand different worlds exist in your game. So it just, I don't know, it, it, I can understand why, but it kind of breaks my heart a little bit. Uh, and this is something that I wanted to open up to the comments and such. Uh, where do you stand on download only? Uh, are you a, a physical collector or does the, is the only thing that matters to you gameplay? Uh, I, I definitely definitely fall somewhere in the middle. I was pissed off when I when I reserved my collector's edition of Mortal Kombat and found out that it was going to be a digital only release as well. So uh, because I obviously collect Mortal Kombat stuff, so I want a physical disc for this. Uh, but then when I when I'm looking at Metal Gear, like I'm probably just going to get the digital version of Metal Gear. Also, probably just going to get the digital version of the Arkham Trilogy for my Switch because I, the, it's a portable gaming system and that kind of makes the most sense to me. The more games I can fit onto my 256, the better because then I have all of my games in one spot, right? I don't know. It's it's a long conversation that that will never end and probably will never go the way that I personally want it to go. So it kind of is what it is. So let's move right along. Next piece we're talking about is uh, also a little bit of a conversation, and that's Mortal Kombat 1 stress test happened this weekend. I was blessed enough to once again be uh, asked to be part of said stress test. Uh, and I mean, if you want my thoughts in my in 
in-depth thoughts, then I did a stream where we went over my in-depth thoughts of the game. Uh, I have since watched a couple of other YouTubers and their final thoughts on the stress test and hopes for uh, uh, changes going forward with the game. And it kind of seems fairly unanimous that the ground motion in this game was just weird. It wasn't exactly slow, but it was slower than Mortal Kombat 11 by and large. The the jumping, uh, the, the aerial combat was much more springy and kind of took a lot of adjusting. Uh, but in, in that being said, it still felt like uh, Mortal Kombat 11 version 2 as far as like the controls in a lot of ways. So I don't, it's just kind of a mixed bag. Uh, the things I want to see aren't necessarily anything that's going to speed up the game. Uh, I, I, I want to see the, the, the frame traps get fixed and get taken out. Uh, there are already a few. Uh, there's at least one. There's one... Uh, Two, two hit combo that Liu Kang has that is a frame trap. That is, if you get stuck in the corner in the, in the right way, basically you're, you're gonna lose at least half your bar of, uh, half your health bar because it's a frame, you can't, literally cannot move out of it. Uh, so that, and then wake up moves. The wake up moves are severely missing from this because that was a big part of my game in Mortal Kombat 11. Uh, I spent a minute since I played X, so I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure there were wake up moves in uh, Mortal Kombat X as well. So, and it just felt really weird to not have them in Mortal Kombat 1. Uh, aside from that, the game looks fantastic. Uh, I'm super, super intrigued by a lot of the story stuff that we have already learned from the little bit that they gave us for this stress test. Uh, most notably is uh, Shao Kahn is not Khan, obviously. He is referred to in uh, Mirror Match dialogue with Katana as just Shao, which sounds very strange to the ear. Uh, also, we learned that uh, Katana calls herself an Edenian, but then also says that she serves Outworld. So something along the lines of what happened in the first two myth, uh, first two continuities uh, is happening again here, but different, which kind of is the theme for the story from what we know so far. So very intrigued. I think uh, Netherrealm is doing a great job with dangling just little bits and giving us a little taste of story here and there. And, uh, and then in just a couple of months, they're gonna drop it all like a ton of bricks. Uh, yeah, so Mortal Kombat 1 stress test was very, very honored. Thank you very much, Netherrealm, for inviting me to uh, be part of a rather large group. Like, I don't feel like I'm special necessarily, uh, but I, I, it, it, it was larger than Mortal Kombat 11, but still not the entire fan base. So I am a little special. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it where I can get it. Uh, all right, so the Mortal Kombat 1, that's, that's what we got there. Let's move over to... Nintendo Direct. Uh, this is not quite as big as the other non-E3 presentations, so we're going to get a little bit more information from the list, but this is still going to be the list of what came out at Nintendo Direct. So everything that they talked about Nintendo Direct and any release dates or release windows that I could get in here, that's what this is going to be. So here we go. First up, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, new 2D Mario game that looks super fun, October 20th, 2023. Super Mario RPG Remake, oh my god, I've been waiting for this forever. The entire Nintendo community has been waiting for this since it launched on the uh, Super Nintendo, I think in like 92. Uh, remake, uh, the, the classic Super Nintendo game is uh, coming to the Switch sometime 2023. Detective Pikachu 2, sequel to the 2016 game, coming out October 23 as well. Uh, Mario Wear Move It, new Mario Wear game. These are WarioWare, sorry, WarioWare game. Uh, these are video game crack. There's no way you can't buy this game because it's calling your name right now. Uh, release in December of 23. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Collection Volume 1. Not only did we get the announcement that it was coming to the Switch, but we also got the full details of all the games that are going to be involved in this Metal Gear Collection. So you've got Metal, Gears one, uh, Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, and 3. You have the original 
original Metal Gear games for the MSX platform, you also have the Nintendo games. The two NES games are going to be part of the Volume 1 bundle. And then we have a bunch of rumors as to Volume 2 and other things associated therein. So stick around for the rumors section. But uh, we have the release date here as well as November of 2023. I think it was actually November 24th of 2023. I didn't write that down though because amazing notes. You know this. Uh, from there, uh, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, uh, we're getting two new amiibos, Zelda and Ganondorf. Uh, those are going to be coming out later this year. No release date for them. Uh, new Pikmin 4 details, gameplay, all this stuff. Uh, Pikmin's 1 and 2 both have launched now on the Switch platform. You can get them in the Nintendo store. Uh, Pikmin 4, though, is expected to release sometime in 24. Uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Hidden Treasure of Area Zero expansion gets a new look. We get a little bit more. These two expansions will be released December of this year. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe adds more stuff because uh, why not? <laughs> Mario Kart 8 Deluxe adds new course alongside PD Piranha, Wiggler, and Comic. New course Shroom Ridge will be added to Mario Kart 8. Uh, based on Mushroom Kingdom from Super Mario Bros. 3, PD Piranha, Wiggler, and Comic also added as playable characters. Uh, no release date for this for this stuff. Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon Remaster announced along with a new Princess Peach game that we didn't get really anything for but like 10 seconds of cinematic. Uh, the Luigi uh, the Luigi's Mansion game will be released November of 23. No date for the Princess Peach one, though it is speculated to be sometime in 24. And that's it. That's everything that we talked about in the Nintendo Direct. So uh, I very much encourage you to go watch it. It's really short if you can get the Nintendo, the one straight from Nintendo. I almost said Nintendo Direct. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it, it was good stuff. The Metal Gear stuff, the, 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 the Batman Arkham Trilogy stuff, uh, Luigi's Mansion, super excited about all of this. All of this is going to be great uh zelda stuff i'll could just could, i'll keep going whatever <laughs> from there that's what we got for follow-ups let's talk about some trailers now shall we uh we have the fort solace trailer uh we got we haven't really heard a whole lot about this game since the summer games fest last year some summer games Fest 2022 uh we now got the troy baker trailer uh voice actor troy baker does about half of this video is troy baker talking about his involvement with the game which is awesome and other voice actors that are equally as awesome as Trey Baker. He talks about them as well. And then the second half of this is legitimate gameplay trailer, and it looks fantastic. This, I, I mean, horror, survival horror stuff is pretty great, and this looks like it's going to be an incredible amount of fun as well. Go check out the trailer. Uh, the game is set to launch August 22nd of this year. And then we got one that was kind of unexpected. We have Transformers Earth Spark, uh, a new game based on the anime of the same name. Uh, it's going to be launching October 20th. Uh, it is going to be launching on current gen and previous gen. So Xbox One as well as Xbox Series consoles with PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and Steam all getting... I, I couldn't... I didn't... don't remember if it said Switch as well, though I wouldn't be surprised considering it's going on previous generation. Um... And it looks like it's going to be kid oriented. This, this, there's a bigger conversation here of is this the longest that we have had cross generational releases? Um, I, I honestly don't know how I would be able to look that up, but somebody, somebody somewhere's got to have that information. So uh, let me know somewhere on the socials, in the, in the comment section, whatever. Uh, is this the longest that we have had cross? A generational support from even just from third parties because by now I think all first party uh, titles are going to be exclusively on current gen but uh, obviously third parties still think that it's a viable option to release games on previous hardware as well so it's a very interesting time in gaming right now uh, that's what we got for trailers though let's talk about some regular ass news shall we we got Amazon in the news and for not necessarily for anything terrible uh, but they're starting a new program where they're going to be using local businesses as delivery uh, people <laughs> effectively uh, the the way it, the basic way it works out is uh, the 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 local business is going to be 
required to have a certain amount of storage in order to store the things that need to be delivered, as well as be required to deliver at least 30 packages a day in order to maintain their partnership with Amazon. It works out roughly to approximately $2, where is it, $2 and... I did take this, there it is, $2.50 per package uh, if, the, if the small businesses uh, sign up for this program. So I don't know exactly if it's going to be worth it for a lot of small businesses, though they are hoping to fully roll this out at least across the states by next year. So very interesting situation. I feel like you probably could have just paid your drivers a little bit better and then you'd have plenty of drivers, but maybe that's just me. <laughs> uh, from there, let's talk about this YouTube situation. We have YouTube uh, dabbling with the AI, if you will. Uh, right now, they have quote unquote hundreds of YouTubers are beta testing a new AI system in the back end of YouTube. So if you are on YouTube and you are a content creator, then you have uh, what is known as the creator dashboard. Uh, that creator dashboard is going to allow you if you are one of these creators who th they've opened this up for, or if you're just waiting for it to happen, it's going to allow you to use AI to dub what you've said said into other languages. Uh, currently, the, the experiment is only going for Spanish and Portuguese, which kind of makes sense because they're very similar languages. Um, but that it, it's only those two languages. And again, it's only a few hundred uh, content creators. So it, it I have not been able to experience aside from the videos that YouTube has shown us uh, along these along these lines. Uh, I've not experienced myself. It has not been opened up to me just yet. Uh, the accuracy of such things because I, I don't have that option on my YouTube just yet. But very interesting because so the the YouTube game uh, as it's been uh, adjusting over the course of the last few years. Um, like you take a look at Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast is the reason I'm sure why this is happening in a lot of ways, because Mr. Beast has his main channel, his reactions channel, and then I think he still has a game channel and then probably some other uh, periphery, uh, periphery th stuff. So uh, he has all of those channels and then he has the duplicates of those channels in different languages where he is he's the biggest YouTuber on the platform. So he has the money to hire out somebody to not only translate it, but then to hire a, a voice actor to say the words. <laughs> That's actually been a, a way for smaller channels to find a lot of growth or or it is to duplicate your stuff into different languages um and it's been kind of expensive for us small guys uh to do because the the good ais that would won't make you look silly cost money you have to pay money to get the the ai uh text to speech stuff so not a lot of people have been doing it but if youtube is incorporating this as part of the platform then that seems like it's going to lower the the barrier for entry a little bit in just doing the work because right now what i'm going to speak from personal experience right now what is a, a pretty decent limiting factor for me is i'm a one-man show so i can't not i don't have the time to translate my stuff let alone run it through an ai or even do the voiceover myself because that then requires extra editing which i barely have enough time to edit what i post as is so for them to in just include this uh is is kind of amazing i'm not gonna lie this very potentially if you just do the little bit of extra work this very potentially could make it that much easier to get into the partner program just because you're opening up your channel to so many more thousands of people who speak other languages who wouldn't have otherwise watched you because you only speak the your native language so yeah very interesting situation as far as the the back end of youtube is concerned we will be keeping tabs on this one for sure that though is what we have for regular ass news so that brings us into to our gaming and tech suggestion for the week. Again, I feel like this one kind of is obvious. Uh, Batman Arkham Trilogy, go play. 
uh, th uh, these games have kind of revolutionized how uh, a lot of different publishers look at the quote-unquote classic beat-em-up because the, the Arkham Asylum very specifically, anything beyond that, there's arguable uh, uh, influence from it. But Arkham Asylum very specifically is, is the reason why we have Spider-Man. And Spider-Man is probably one of the highest grossing games of the last uh, roughly decade or so. So it only stands to reason that like... If, if that game owes a lot to Batman, then probably a lot of other games owe a lot to Batman as well. And I, it still holds up. They are still an incredible amount of fun to play. I'm actually very excited to get to uh, download them onto my Switch because I then I can have them wherever I go and I don't need my Xbox to play them. So yeah, Batman Arkham Trilogy, go play any one of them, all three of them, just do it. It's fun. Once again, this is just the gaming and tech section. It is a shortened piece of the much longer news show that I do over on youtube.com slash generally nerdy, which is the main channel. Uh, there's a lot more music and comic books and movies and TV shows, etc., etc., that can be found over there on the regular show. Thank you for joining me here, though, nerds. Before we go, always, always remember that if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here. <laughs>